You're watching Lily Lake, part two of two. And welcome, this is Dina Tollefson. I'm so glad to have you here today. So if you're like me, you are more of an indoor painter than an outdoor painter. And so um, I am doing a plein air event here in Amana, Iowa. And I want to encourage you to, to do outdoor painting or end plein air painting if you haven't given it a try. It's a lot of fun. There's some challenges of being outdoors, so I want to show you, wind is one of them. I want to show you some things that I do to make things easier for me, and I'll share with you some of my favorite plein air equipment and supplies that I use. I'll be doing a painting demonstration in acrylic of a high relief texture that I developed called Daubism. So I'm doing this um, super thick texture, starting first with an underpainting. And the underpainting I completed in part one, the video part one. The other thing I'll, uh, last thing I'll do here will be to take you behind the scenes at a uh, plein air awards dinner. So let's get started. So I'm applying paint with a, this is a uh, palette knife or a painting knife. Actually, this one's a, yeah, this is a painting knife. The difference between palette knife and painting knife is palette knife has got a little hook on the end so you don't uh, get paint on your fingers when you're working. And a palette knife uh, just comes straight out from the blade. So uh, one tip is to be sure to bring plenty of paper towels or rags uh, with you when you are plein air painting. So I am um, using these painting knives to apply the texture to the canvas. And uh, whenever you can, uh, it's easier to paint outside if you are in the shade. That's like a big thing. So sometimes you might notice that painters have got umbrellas, uh, reflective umbrellas, that type of thing. Part of it is to keep, in case it rains on them, but a bigger reason is to, because of the shade uh, the glare from the sun will distort our ability to look at color and judge colors and judge values accurately. So if you use a uh, shade umbrella for painting, or if you do like what I did, as I just sit in the shade, um, make sure that the easel and the painting itself, um, that I'm all in the shade, then it just makes it easier to tell what you're painting and be able to judge that. Oftentimes what happens is you get uh, your painting indoors and it doesn't look as bright and vibrant. So by painting in the shade, um, then you um, can combat that problem by um, getting uh, not such a bright light on yourself when you're working. Now um, I've got this acrylic paint and you might be wondering, am I using, am I misting the paint or doing anything like that to keep it at the right moisture level? What I'm doing is I'm using a Masterson Stay Wet palette. It's their mini palette, a small thing, and it's got a sponge on the inside that you get wet. And then there's this membrane that sits on the top, a paper membrane. And what you do is you, and I got this ready before I went um, painting. So you get that ready ahead of time at home, and then when you're out on site, um, then the palette is ready to use. What, um, what you do is you, uh, you can boil the membrane or just get it close to boiling water or super hot tap water. And then what will happen is when you put your paint on top of the palette, it will stay at the right moisture level and the wet sponge underneath will wick the right amount of water up to the surface so you don't ever have to mist your paint when you're working, which is super convenient. putting these daubs on here following the underpainting. I'd also like to share with you um, one of my favorite painting, uh, outdoor painting supplies, which is the Gorilla Painter Pashad box. So I just opened that up here and you can see it's got a little adjustment. You can adjust the angle that it sits at. It's a super sturdy box. I've got my list of um, painting supplies. You can store your paints in there. You can put your uh, pencils, brushes, whatever it is that you need to store. There's a little mast that sits at the top. You can adjust that and on days like this where there's a little bit of wind that is super important to keep um, keep your canvas from blowing off your easel. 
Now this chain that it comes with is also super convenient. That was an accessory that I got. Um, and you put a roll of kitchen towels or um, paper towels into the um, into this thing and you clamp it onto the edge and that way your paper towels are always easily available. And this little bar that I just slipped into the holes, that's what you set your painting on. So those holes, you can um, put it up high or you can put it down low, whatever's most comfortable for you. And then you hold that mast at the top. You unscrew it to cover it up. And these little leather straps with this strong, sturdy um, snaps are really a great way to go. I did a lot of research before picking um, which kind of outdoor easel I wanted to use. I considered a Julian style easel or that type of thing and ended up going with the Gorilla Painter. And then uh, kind of a funny but not so funny thing, and this just shows when you're painting outside you never really know. Um, when I got to the painting site, um, so I live in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and this was in uh, this painting um, activity, uh, the Kateri's Fresh, uh, Fresh Paint event. They hold every, um, every year. This is their 10th year doing it. And I've done this uh, multiple years, but when I got on site, my um, I normally take the um, the Gorilla Painter and I attach it to the bottom of a tripod, an adjustable tripod to put the height at the right height for me. And what happened was my um, tripod had broken. So sadly, I had no tripod, so I ended up having to improvise and used a ba uh, back of a bucket to hold the Peshad box on there. So it's one of those things where when you're outside, you know, you sometimes have to kind of wing it. But for me, having a list is super important. Um, on part one of this video, um, I have my complete painting list for you to use. Um, I hope that that's helpful to you uh, when you're outdoor painting. And if you're new to my channel, I want to welcome you. And if you've come back from before, thank you so much for being here again. I do um, unboxings and demonstrations and tutorials, uh, occasional live streams on different topics, including uh, how to get in a gallery, gallery representation, how to price your work, that kind of thing. So I'm a full-time artist, and um, I've been in galleries for 20 years. I left a job um, six years ago, a successful job as an electrical engineer to pursue art full time. So I hope that you'll follow me on my journey spreading joy through art. I'm really glad to have you here. Hope that you'll also ring that notification bell and uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you'd like to see next. Um, would you like to see more tutorials? Uh, what do you like to see? Um, next and I'll do my best to include that. I'm also doing a lot of art challenges so you everyone is welcome to join in on the art challenges that I host on my channel. A lot of fun to do and a great way. We've got a wonderful art community here on YouTube and I cherish each and every one of you and I'm really glad to have you guys have you guys here. It's wonderful. So I'm using the knife to fill in all of the areas on the painting and what I'm aiming for is a cross between a mosaic and a low relief sculpture and a traditional painting. I want to really make it feel like you want to reach out and touch the painting. That's my goal here with all this texture I'm adding. Here's a little view of Lily Lake. And there's Mary, wave hi to Mary. She was the person painting uh, next to me during the event. There were 45 artists participating in the Kateri's uh, plein air event. So now I'd like to take you over to the awards banquet that the gallery held um, for all of the participants. And sitting at our table here, there's my beloved husband, Bill. Say hi to Bill. He's going to give a little wave. Hi, darling. But um, he's so wonderful. We've been married um, almost 31 years. But take a look at all of the amazing interpretations of the Amana, Iowa landscape. 
that the artists came up with. It is just uh, exciting to me to see how everyone interprets nature and what they choose to paint, what they choose to leave out, um, what is uh, something that catches their eye and how do they explore that through color and line and form. So thank you so much for being here and until next time, this is Dina Tollefson. Bye-bye.